The Woodland Creatures of America. I remember the first time I saw a possum. I was in the US for a few years, but I haven't seen one until I was in my mid-twenties. I was sure that it was an enormous mutated rat. It was on the other side of the road and I was worried that it would go after me. They are the size of small mini horse and that can be terrifying at first. But they are very sweet and good for the neighborhood. They are a blessing as they eat ticks and a lot of them. It took many years to encounter a skunk as well, but as you can imagine, I was well aware of them. By the time I finally met one in person, it was right next to me. It was on his way somewhere, going about his personal business, completely unafraid. The same can't be said about me. By now, I've lost count how many hot flashes I experienced in my life due to wild creatures. When you find yourself next to a wild animal, the last thing you want to do is run away, as it may squirt after you. From the stories I've heard, no one really recovers from the squirt of a skunk. That smell stays with the victim for life. I know that this is no big deal for people born in America, but most of what I knew where I came from were well-traveled pigeons, fancy squirrels, and cute sparrows. And storks. I don't even mention them, as I basically grew up among them. There were deer, wild boar, rabbits, and horses, and cows, and chickens, that's for sure. But animals in America are different somehow. They seem more intelligent or intellectual. Aside from a terrible encounter with an owl and an equally terrible poem, I did actually run into a creature that is rare, and it was a very large porcupine. I was on my way to the local store, and it crossed the road. This was in the middle of the woods. Though I didn't want to frighten it too much, I really wanted to take a closer look. I've never seen one before. But all I got was a blurry photo as she hurried on her way. Even though I didn't get a very good look, the encounter seemed pretty magical. I later found out that black bears were being introduced back into that neck of the woods. But from what I understand, they pretty much keep to themselves, unless they are trying to be cute. Black bears don't run up to attack, they just run up to people to challenge them, to make them go away. If you stand your ground, they'll move along. They seem to be just big raccoons. Brown bears are the scary ones. I have had several close raccoon encounters, and they never cease to surprise. Once at the Jack Pine Hiken campgrounds, I woke up at 4 a.m. to a raccoon that I later named Friday, gently pulling out hot dog buns from my food pack. I did hang it up in the tree just to be careful, and it was in a zipped backpack, but there was a little hole where the straps ran, and he found it, the little thief. Ever since, I have started dangling my food from a branch on a rope. That seems to present a proper challenge for them. Over at Nord House, I only ever encountered one raccoon snooping around my tent. This was some ways from the lake. I'm always very careful, and I zip up my tent before I go on a walk, or in this case, swim. But this amazing brainiac actually managed to unzip my tent. It went inside and left paw prints on my pillow. I have not used my inflatable pillow since. In closing, if there can be a moral to such a little story, I would like to offer some advice to all adventurers. 
bears or no bears, don't keep food anywhere near your tent and get a little luggage lock to lock the two zipper pulls together when you go for a walkabout.